Okay, fine. So, thanks everyone for being here. So, my name is Jean-Michel Sillerier. I'm from France and from the KDAT company. And today I, I will talk to you about, is there some kind of Larsen maybe? Or is it just me? No. Um, and today I will, I will talk about a static analysis tool which is specialized in Qt code bases and problems with the Qt library. So instead of detecting standard problems in C++ code, it really tries to see where you misuse Qt. And so before starting, I would like to ask how many of you use or have used or will be using Qt? Okay. Quite nice. Okay, so <laughs> cool. Um, so uh, first, simple overview. So the software is called Clazy. So it's based on Clang, like uh, so many things today. So it uses the Rose LLVM API, and it, it is very similar to Clang Tidy, but only Qt-based checks. So it's free software. You can download it on GitHub, and it works on all platforms where you would reasonably develop software on it. So uh, the main point of Clazy is to enforce Qt best practices and at compile time, of course. So you, you want to get errors in your uh, continuous integration pipeline if you have bad practices. And these practices are fairly easy to implement, as we will see uh, by the end of this presentation. But it, it also comes with a few useful checks for general C++ issues, because sometimes you, you just see a problem in your code base and say, OK, well, why wouldn't I write a small check for that one? And that's what happens. And everyone is much more happier after that. And I will quickly dive in the usage. So um, I have a few uh, um, a few code examples. So for instance, uh, let's say uh, this one, which is fairly simple. So I have a simple struct. Is the font size good enough for everyone? OK, cool. So a simple struct with um, vectors and strings. And oh, what am I doing? I am passing that struct by value. That's very not nice, you get copies and stuff like this, so you don't want that. So um, on this, you can do, for instance, so uh, Clazy standalone. And uh, you get a very nice warning. OK, hey, why aren't you basing this by const reference? Because that, that's what you, you want in that case. Uh, and so I, I can go and try to fix my code. And, or instead, I will just make my type much smaller. And this time it says, OK, you know, this is a very small type. It, it fits in your register. So why are you passing it by reference in, in this other function? So it first, it gives this kind of nice warnings for C++ users. And then it also gives more cute base warnings. So it can be used as a Clang plugin so that you can just have one pass where you pass Clazy and Clang Tidy and everything at once. Or it can be used standalone, or it can be used in integrated development environments. So it's already integrated in two, so I will present it a bit. And the second next point is that, of course, for not all checks, but some, they can get fixed automatically. So for instance, if I go to, uh, again, my file. So it was called lib, and I will copy lib into uh, lib2.cpp. And um, I have a um, small script, which basically just call Clazy, which, well, does all the fixes and also includes the Qt pass, because else you have to either use compile commands.json, either add them by hand. So I don't, I'm lazy, so I do scripts. And if I do this, I can do a Clazy fix on lib2.cpp. And here, OK, it said, um, this was a const reference, and uh, the fix it was applied. So if I go into my lib2.cpp, I see that at the end, now, well, it fixed my code. So like most Clang tools, if you already use Clang Tidy, it's not a big surprise for you. But if you don't, I also encourage you to try Clang Tidy because it's very nice. And so as I said, it works better with compile commands.json, which means that if you use that, you should. You don't need to pass all the compiler flags because the tool is able to infer the compiler flags from the compile commands.json file, which can be generated from CMake, from IDs, from whatever. OK, so I, I will present a bit how it works in Qt Creator. So Qt Creator is a ID built with Qt, but it's not only for Qt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should be good like this. Um, so um, Qt Creator integrates uh, Clazy directly. And um, so you just type code. So here, for instance, if I, it, it will just recompute in the background. And when is there, the warnings are shown in yellow. And you can even 
apply the fix directly. So you, you can you don't even need to compile your code anymore. You just type and you fix the errors and and you, well, you don't compile and it still works. So that's fantastic. So um, I will present a few fixes which are integrated with Clang with Clazy to give you a hint of what it does. So if we go into more cute base code, so here for instance, I have a few widgets. I have some QString duplication, so very run-of-the-mill cute code. And what I have, so many bugs, like 10 lines and it's already a mess. So um, here, for instance, it complains that uh, the widget is not taking, um, is it contrasted enough? Should I maybe put it? I, I, I change my color scheme because it may be hard to read for you guys. Uh, uh, get, uh, uh, uh. Plus, plus. Okay, where is that? <laughs> uh, code. Plus, plus. Okay, well, no, I, I don't remember where this is. So let's not waste too much time on that. Um, but yeah, here, for instance, you, you get a very interesting bug. So, chill event is a function which is called when an object is created. And is, so, Qt is generally based about tree structures. So, uh, objects have a list of children and their children are added to their parents. And when a children is added to its parent, the parent will call child event. And what you can theoretically do is call get a pointer to the child. And if you want, for instance, to do a cast, the problem is that the child isn't, hasn't finished construction yet. So this cast is, well, it's basically something that you don't want to do because you, it's, it, you are lying to the compiler and it will certainly crash at runtime. So other interesting stuff, there is a lot of emphasis on performance because Qt generally well, does not crash too much, and well, it, it's just that you can have some bad patterns which lead to decreased performance, so it's fine if you have a very small software, but then at some point your boss comes and say, hey, let's deploy this software to the whole company with uh, gigabytes of databases, and then all your approximations, you, you pay them very hard, so Classy helps you to detect all the performance bugs that you can introduce with Qt, for instance, doing allocations for no good reason. So for instance, this will convert this uh, um, UTF-8 uh, literal into UTF-16. At runtime, it will allocate a new new string. But you can do, you can say, OK, um, I don't want this. I, I want instead to compu compute it at compile time. And here, you don't get any memory allocations anymore, which is much better. Likewise, for here, for instance, you don't need to call a uh, tool over, which if you want to do a case insensitive comparison, it's valid code. I mean, it works, but you could also just say, OK, compare these two strings and do, a, do it case insensitively instead of this bad pattern, which comes from actual code, because all the fixes in Clazy come from code that was actually seen in the while and that was deemed invalid, so yeah. So um, it's also integrated in KDevelop, which is another well-known ID, and I don't know if any user integrate Clazy, but well, it's fairly easy to do. And oh yeah, and you can also run it on your whole project. So like uh, this, you can say analyze, and you can select all the checks of me. Sorry, it's a bit small, but here you can select all the checks that you want to run and say OK. And then you, you can run it on your whole project, and it will. So this can't easily be made. Bigger, I'm sorry, but you can see all the various problems in the various source files. So um, this, um, so the checks in Clazy instead of ClangTD, which are organized in whether it's uh, Apple or Google or Fuchsia or Android, all kinds of uh, pair project grouping that exists in ClangTD. In Clazy, the grouping is pair false positive right. Um, when we say false positive, it's not necessarily that random code is start is going to throw warnings. It's just that uh, in some cases, even though the code may look invalid, it's actually what the programmer wants. And so we say, OK, uh, there is a good chance that even if it's not a good pattern, you actually want to do that. So double check this. So yeah, and so you have four levels, level 0 to 3. And uh, well, level 0 is basically very bad stuff that is most nearly always wrong, and level three is stuff where you really need to double think and double check what the static analyzer tells you. Um, so another interesting feature is get help on checks to understand basically the warning. So there is a nice UI for that. 
so here you can see very strong and stable checks as well, uh, which are also by those categories that I mentioned. So, and you can also ask Classy, okay, um, let me check something on QObject. So it, it's all markdowns and, and they have a markdown viewer, yeah, much better. Um, so here you can see, okay, this fix does this kind of stuff, it triggers in these cases, and you may always, you, you may not always want to have this check enabled because of these reasons. So there is actually a lot of documentation and well, every time a new check gets added, people try to really say, why was this check added? In which case does it apply? Do you want it to be always on, et cetera, et cetera. Like most Lang tools, it has a config file, so you put it at the root of your Git repository, and then you put it in your continuous integration, and you are happy because, well, that's like how all Clang tools work. And yeah, so to basically, the main idea be, be behind this is how do we, as a community, improve and share best practices. Like if you follow, you, you know, those are the C++ core git lines, but most of them aren't translated to checks. And well, in your project, you generally have some kind of style guide, stuff like this. But instead of, you know, putting it in a Word document that no one reads, why not directly encode your invariants, your project invariants in code? And that's fairly easy to do. So um, I will show just a few warnings implementations. Uh, so this is the crazy source code. It's relatively small with all the checks. So yeah, for instance, uh, let's say string left, yeah, this one. So uh, this is a check, it's like 62 lines and the actual check is, I don't know, 20 something lines. So that's very fast and it's run of the mill usage of the LLVM API. So you, you check, am I, for instance, in this one, am I calling a C++ method on a class? Is this method QString left? Um, does it have more than one argument? And uh, more than zero arguments, sorry. And then we check and, well, conditions can happen. So yeah, that's really simple. And then you, you just put the warning. Um, so there are some more interesting ones. So we, which one is this? Level two? are missing. Yes. Okay, so um, this one shows um, the reason why um, Clazy is not necessarily part of ClangTD, is that it, it comes with a bunch of, let's say, helper functions, which are really, really specific to Qt. So for instance, is this type a Q object for like this? So Clazy itself doesn't have dependencies to Qt, but, well, it has a lot of encoded knowledge about Qt, so you really, yeah. And so it's a bit a bit bigger, this one. And finally, the last one, which is also interesting, is range loop. Uh, range loop. So th this one, uh, it not only does it give checks, but it also has fixes. So here, that's how it works. You first, so you, you, you have all the here. Yeah, so the, the, the check starts here. Uh, here it does, uh, it checks if the warning applies and if it does, then it will also write down where the code needs to be fixed. And as you can see, it's fairly simple. You just say where in the source code uh, things must change and how must they change. And then you say just say emit warning and you pass the fixes at the end. And then the tools all do the work magically because it's well-developed projects. So uh, that's mostly it. So um, Clazy is part of a set of uh, tools. So KDAB is very, puts a lot of emphasis on helping developer productivity. And it, we have a lot of uh, useful free tools, and through free as in free software, most are GPL or LGPL, that you can use on your project. So um, for instance, Gamma Ray, which does uh, introspection on Qt, Hotspot, which is a GUI for Perf, and HipTrack, which is a memory analyzer. So, and Clazy is another tool in this tool belt to basically make the code more robust. So some numbers, very simple, 22,000 lines of code. So it's a small code base. And uh, most importantly, uh, where to download the thing. But if you just look for Clazy on Google, it's the first result. So uh, yeah, and if any of you maintain some packages in Linux distribution, please package it because it's fun. Um, list of contributors, so thanks to these people because they're the one doing the actual hard work. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's it. Um, 
Thanks, everyone.